Good day again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back again together and we are looking at uh, the November 2020 again uh, um, exam that you wrote for your prelims. Okay, and um, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please become part of the family, please. All right, and uh, for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, please send us an email, and our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, um, let's have a look at question nine that has to do with the electrolytic cell. Okay, so they said the simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used to uh, used for the pur purification of copper. Uh, the impure copper contains small amounts of silver uh, and zinc as the only impurities. All right. So remember that um, unlike the galvanic cell, remember in the galvanic cell, what we have is we are trying to convert uh, chemical energy into electrical energy. In the electrolytic cell, we are trying to convert uh, electrical energy into chemical energy right so they say first of all define the term electrolysis well we say it is the process of breaking down compounds and forming new ones by using electrical energy okay um, some instances you can say it's the process of uh, in which electrical energy is converted uh, to chemical energy okay so whichever one you prefer as long as you just illustrate that, uh, first of all, electrical energy is used uh, to uh, to produce chemical energy. Right. OK, so uh, they say in 9.2, write down the name or formula of the two positive ions used in the electrolyte. Now, first of all, before we even go far, um, let's first of all look at what we are trying to accomplish. They said to us, We've got impure copper, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, they, they said the impure copper contains small amounts of silver and zinc impurities, right? So what are we trying to do here, okay? We're trying to purify copper. And so obviously what we're going to do is, um, uh, you know, just to quickly show you, the impure copper, which is on this side, we have to make sure that this guy becomes um, our, our, our cathode, right? Um, so it's going to undergo reduction, okay, so that um, we can make sure that this guy breaks down, okay? And obviously the anode, um, this is where oxidation will take place, this will be, uh, will connect uh, the pure copper, on this side so we want to make sure that this one breaks down and then this one is formed right and in order for it to do that we have to have an electrolyte here and that electrolyte has to co uh, uh, contain copper um, ions so we can actually take copper nitrate uh, we can take um, yeah uh, yeah copper copper sulfate as well, um, yeah, whatever electrolyte that is soluble, right? Okay, so they say, okay, write down the name, okay, uh, or formula of two positive ions present in the electrolyte. Okay, so if you think about it, they told us about we definitely have to have copper, uh, copper 2 plus, right? So, um uh, so copper two plus ions, all right. Uh, but we also have. Uh, they told us about zinc being present there, right? So we can also have zinc two plus ions, okay. Um, yeah, and uh, I think we also have silver there. They said small amounts of silver. So you could have definitely included that there. So Ag plus. So those are the electro uh, positive electrodes. I mean uh, uh, positive uh, ions that you could have present there. So uh, any of those, they wanted two of them. So you can just mention those. They say write down the half reaction that takes place at the cathode. Now please remember at the cathode what happens. 
this is where reduction is taking place and by the way we do have another video on um, the electrolytic cell if you haven't watched it uh, please just go and indulge there okay so we know that um, uh, you know at the cathode this is where reduction is taking place what is reduction it's going to be the uh, you know the, the receiving electrons right so in this case um, uh, so so remember reduction is taking place at that negative I, I think I got that uh, incorrect the first one the, the first time around right uh, remember this guy has to be negatively charged okay so copper 2 plus ions would actually be attracted there and that's the negative side of the cell that would be the positive side this is where copper is breaking down okay so copper is actually becoming copper 2 plus okay uh, so on the cathode side the the negative side this is where we will have copper 2 plus ions from the electrolyte receiving electrons okay that are provided there by the cell and thereby becoming copper so that's the half reaction that would take place once again ladies and gents uh, please just be uh, um, very careful that you only have one arrow there right uh, because that's the reaction that's taking place okay right and then let's take uh, 9.4 okay uh, they say refer to the uh, table of standard reduction potentials and explain why purified copper will not contain any zinc so to answer these kind of questions I want you to quickly look at uh, your standard reduction potentials table look at this you've got uh, increasing oxidizing ability there okay so it means as you go down they become stronger oxidizing agents right uh, whereas uh, in terms of reducing agents um, they actually get strong as you go up right now if you were to compare uh, zinc 2 plus ions compared to copper uh, where's copper 2 plus there it is there uh, going to copper so if if you were to compare so copper 2 plus ions are, are, are have a stronger oxidizing ability than um, you know say for instance zinc right um, so I hope you could see that clearly right so it's down there okay so copper is down uh, on that table so what we can do is that we can simply explain that uh, zinc you can either put it you know uh, this way that uh, copper is a stronger has a stronger oxidizing ability right than zinc okay so uh, obviously copper will therefore uh, be reduced right um, or uh, because we want to explain why zinc is not actually oxidized okay or rather wh why it is not uh, uh, reduced right uh, that was our question uh, they, they said explain why the purified copper will not contain any zinc okay because obviously it will not undergo that uh, reduction uh, uh, it will not be reduced so we can simply just say that remember that zinc 2 plus ions okay are weaker or oxidizing are weak oxidizing or have a weak oxidizing ability or I'll just say weak oxidizing agent okay then copper 2 plus all right okay uh, therefore it will not be reduced uh, to zinc therefore uh, it will not be reduced Right. to answer those questions ladies and gents please always just refer to that standard reduction potentials table right uh, it, it just makes it that much easier to see which one is easier to oxidize which one is easier uh, to reduce right uh, so it will not be reduced okay reduced remember oxidizing ability is the one that undergoes reduction so we said uh, zinc is a weaker oxidizing agent so it will not be uh, reduced uh, to zinc okay 
Right, so they've got a weaker oxidizing ability. So yeah, that is how the cookie crumbles. They say uh, 9.4, which is the last one, and uh, 9.5 rather, they say calculate the maximum mass of copper formed if 0 0.6 moles of electrons are transferred. Okay, so this is going to be just a simple stoichiometry, right? So they are telling us that we've got 0 0.6 moles of electrons. Right, I want you to think about it. So when you looked at this reaction, it says for every two moles of electrons, right, you will find only one mole of copper, right? So in this case, for every two moles, we get one. So you can say, well, for every two electrons, you get one mole of copper. So if I've got 0 0.6 moles of electrons, right, how many moles of copper will I get? So I can just quickly cross multiply there. 2 times n, that's 2n, okay, which is equals to 0 0.6 times 1, that will be 0 0.6. We can divide that by 2, okay, so n will be 0 0.3 moles, okay. So these are the number of moles of copper that will be formed, but uh, they wanted to find out the mass, okay, calculate the maximum mass. So we want to find out what would be the mass of copper. So as a result, to get that mass, we simply say, well, now we've got the number of moles. We know it's mass divided by the molar mass. Okay, so that would be uh, 0 0.3. Okay, we want the mass and the molar mass of copper from the periodic table. Okay, if you check it, it's 0, uh, 63.5. Okay, and... Our final answer will be, okay, let's just calculate that quickly. Um, I get an answer of 19.05 grams. Okay, so that is our final answer. Okay, so our final answer there will be 19.05 grams. That's the maximum mass of copper. Uh, obviously, if everyone cooperates, that's what we'll get. Okay, so um, I hope that was simple enough for us in terms of the uh, electrolytic cell. All right. Uh, and, you know, honestly speaking, ladies and gents, these sections, you can really score yourself some free, free marks here if you just know what's happening. If you found yourself lost, it simply means you didn't watch uh, our series uh, on, the, uh, on electrochemistry. Please go do yourself a favor. Oh, before you write those exams, take the time to watch those videos and they will actually help you. All right. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. All right. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and please continue to tell others about this channel and how much you are able to learn. Okay. From me for now. Hola.